Hello. Okay. Um, this is following my other deck tech. Um, I just wanted to make something following it, and uh, these videos aren't that hard to make, so might as well. This is a commander I made recently, like very recently, just put, like put it together. Cards just came in. Um, it's your lock. Uh, he's a four four for four. Uh, Jund. So uh, black, red, green. Uh, whenever a player loses life, or whenever a player loses unspent mana, that player loses that much life. So it brings back the old mechanic mana burn to everyone. Uh, it also has a way of enabling that uh, by pay one tap, each player adds Jund. So, you know, uh, this man, it's built group sluggy. So uh, I kind of just want everyone to take damage. Whoever wins, wins pretty much. So, oh, sorry. I have a bunch of ping effects, uh, Nightshade Harvester, whenever a lander is battlefield, um, that player loses a life, um, for opponents, and, you know, a Nightshade gets bigger, uh, we have Sulfuric Vortex at the beginning of each player's upkeep, it deals two damage to that player, player would gain life, that player gains no life instead, so it kind of puts, like, a cap on the game, uh, Cinder Vines, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, does one damage to them. Uh, Mutilation Shaman, whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land that isn't a mana ability, it deals one damage. It's just a bunch of ways to like get damage going, uh, speed up the game. Uh, Harsh Mentor, uh, ability that isn't a land ab or mana ability, two damage. Uh, Ability that isn't a mana ability, one damage. Uh, and then we got um, Power Surge. Power Surge is during each player's upkeep, player takes one damage for each basically uh, he or she controls untapped. This promotes people tapping their lands, which will take mana burn if they don't have a way to spend that mana. Uh, mana Barbs deals one damage when they tap the land. Um, just ways to increase the flow of the game. I really like this card. It's like it's gone up in price since the release of Boulder's Gate, but uh it used to be like thirty cents, now it's almost three dollars. Um at the beginning of your upkeep, put two descent counters on this enchantment. Uh then each player creates X treasure tokens and it deals X damage to each opponent or to each player where X is the number counters on it. Uh, descent of into av av Avernus? Avernus. I think that's how you say it. But yeah, fun little enchantment. Speeds up the game in both mana production and damage. Uh, Sentinel of Pain. Each player's... At the end of each player's turn, deals X damage where untapped lands. So a bunch of just like... I want everyone to tap out. And if they don't tap out, they get hurt. If they do tap out, they're probably getting mana burnt. Um... We got Zozu, some more land punishment for just lands entering. Um, Wars Toll, whenever a land is a battlefield, tap all lands that player controls. So we want to get people just as low as possible uh, through these ping effects and through um, your luck himself. Uh, there's Fate and Raveler, people, people are going to draw cards, so you got a way to deal damage to them when they draw cards. Uh, painful quandary. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, the player loses five life unless they discard a card. So, this is kind of it's not really card advantage, but it's card disadvantage for your opponents. Uh, or it's life loss, which is you know what this deck is about. Just trying to ping people down. Uh, for the ramp package, I kind of went for um, mana druids. Uh, and our commander is a 4-4, four, four, so uh, Whisper of the Wilds. It uh, Early game, it ramps you. When you get out your commander, it ramps you even more. Uh, same with, I don't even know how to say this, Aysen uh, Ari Karat? I do have no clue how to pronounce some things. But yeah, uh, add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, add two mana of any one color. Just helps out late game. Uh, helps out early game. It's both good in the scenario where you have your commander out and you don't have your commander out. Um, Lanor Visionary draws you a card on the way in, taps for one mana, 
classic. Uh, and then we have Lanor Elves, or no, Finhorn Elves. Sorry, I don't think I put Lanor Elves in this. Maybe I just didn't have a copy. And then, again, Zerta Druid. Tabs for one, but this has extra synergy for when you tap it, deals damage to each opponent. So again, just trying to whittle people down. Uh, some more, I guess, like, artifact. Uh, artifact synergy, like, because we only have one mana rock that isn't Soul Ring. Uh, Spectral Searchlight. Choose a player, that player adds one mana of any color they choose. Uh, this only helps if, like, I guess the person right before you is, uh, you want them to take an extra damage and you just add a color that they can't use, you know, something silly. And then we got, you know, rampant growth. We got cultivate, uh, we got soul ring and we even got, uh, hat, hat seal. Dude, I don't even know how to say, it. dude, I can't pronounce half this stuff. But uh, anyhow, I'm not here to read. I'm here to spread knowledge. Uh, three mana mana rock. Um, pay uh, Taps for one mana of any color. Or you can untap target legendary creature. Uh, this is really good, obviously. You can untap your commander. Tap them again. You net, what? Two? I think? No, three. Yeah. Is that a net three? I think it's a net three. Because you're paying two for the... You net one the first... And then you net two the second. And you net two and then Yeah, you net three, kinda. It's weird to understand, but it it's still worth it because you still get everyone's six mana that they can't do anything with if they're not in colors, or you know, hopefully they can't do anything with it. Uh then we got Pure's Whim. Uh you can uh, choose people to search their library for land cards. You know, we have that land damage tax cards, and we also have uh, just abilities that when, you know, mana burn, we have uh, Citadel of Pain abilities. So the more lands they have, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, this card I'll talk a bit about later, but uh, Collective Voyage, um, it's the reason why I'm running a high number of basics in this, but... Um, this is just a mana sink. You can throw all your mana into it, and it's really good because uh, your luck gives people mana. So if you're just trying to ramp, like on turn four or three, and you play this right after your luck, or like the turn after you get your luck out, um, anyone who's not able to use that mana is most likely going to put their three at least into this. So, you know, that's three basic lands for everyone. Speeds up the game a ton because you know, I it's three for you. Or like, let's say bare minimum, you use the green from your lock and then you you net two off this. Everybody else is putting three into this, so that's like what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven basic lands that everyone's getting in, and that's if they have eleven basic lands in their deck because you know you get three, four colors. You're not running that many basics. Uh, and Spring Bloom Druid, I think I just had this, I, you know, I figured it, well, it couldn't hurt, you know. Uh, plus as a blocker if I need to, to be a blocker. Um, this is kind of mana ramp. At the end of each player's turn, put a charge counter on mana cash for each untapped land that they control. This promotes them to tap their lands and it, you know, benefits you for them not tapping it. Because you can remove a charge counter, add a colorless mana to your mana pool. Uh, any wait, any player may play this ability, but only during his or her turn. Oh, I did not. I did not even read that part, man. I just seen the freaking uh, remove a charge counter. I didn't know anybody could. I'm learning. Okay, I'm learning. Learning about my own deck. Uh, we have this. I just threw this in here because I pulled it. Uh, your opponents can't gain life. Main reason. Uh, someone plays a big life gain spell. Uh, kind of helps out. But uh, deals 3 damage to each opponent. Good. Very good for 2 mana. Um, also, you can choose 2 modes on this. So Put a land from your hand into the battlefield. A ramp. Um, and then creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, and reach the end of turn. I feel like this might be able to save me. Uh, if I'm going to get attacked by a bunch of big flyers. Because, you know, I just throw my little elf druids with reach in there. But 
it was just a versatile card. Uh, the more modes on a card that are useful, um, the better, right? Uh, then we go down to the removal package, which, uh, it's not the greatest removal package, but, you know, we have Return to Nature, Destroy Artifact or Enchantment, Exile Target Card from Graveyard. Graveyard Hate is premium, so this is always good. Two mana Destroy an Artifact, or, like, Enchantment is really good. I have a lot of decks that struggle with dealing with enchantments, because I play a lot of black and red. Uh, Putrefy, uh good budget destroy artifact or creature a turn terminate short target creature two mana pretty good and then we got your uh cream of the crop chaos warp i love this card um when people say like oh there's like that one in a, like i guess it's like 30 in a deck that you know it hurts so a 30 percent chance this thing hurts if you're building because most decks have like 30 cards that are like on on theme. Uh, and they get that card. But I don't know. I, I think it feels even better then. Because it's like, oh, well, I tried, you know. But I, I don't know. I just like Chaos Warp so much. And then there's Beast Within. This just destroys a permanent. Uh, these two cards are really good. Chaos Warp and Beast Within because they can hit anything. Uh, Beautiful Mastery. Low cost. Gives an opponent a card. Uh... You know, you could politic with that card, or if you're just being sp uh, spiteful, pay the f the four, you know? No one draws a card today. Uh, and then we have... Dude, I cannot pronounce certain names in Magic, it's just above me. Uh, choose two, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Target player discards a card, destroy an artifact, or it deals damage to any target. This was 100% a throw-in, but creature card from your graveyard to your hand is, you know, it could be good. Um, you could riskily put your commander in your graveyard, just get it back. Well, at instant speed, it's not that risky, but still a little risky. And then there's a uh, target player discards a card. That's great. Short target artifact, just destroy mana rock. Um, and then two damage to any target. That could kill certain commanders, so pretty good. And I have Assassin's Trophy, uh, Destroy Target Permanent, it's Controller, Search the Library for Basic Land, boom, get more lands out of play, tap those lands, uh, Mana Burn, bam. Look, look at that high synergy play right there. Uh, and then I have a little category here, Mana Sinks. Um, this first card actually doesn't really fit in the Mana Sink, but it gets, it gets around the fact of needing a Mana Sink. So, Horizon Stone, if, uh, if you would lose mana... Uh, unspent mana it becomes colorless instead this is really good just really good because you get around your own mana burn and uh you know more mana you can just tap out colorless just big mana sink next turn uh gemstone array uh pay two put a gem uh gemstone put a counter on gemstone array uh, and then you can remove a counter to add one mana of any color so this is bad in like most decks because four mana and then you're just paying to put charge counters on it but in this deck you know paying two to get a rid of two damage at the end of your turn then to get back an extra you know one two mana at the your next turn fantastic uh staff of domination really good uh you could pay the three that you get from your lock to untap your lock and then pay one to tap him Pay one to untap Staff Domination. Untap him. You know, like... It'll just get all of your mana tapped. Because even if you can't untap another creature with the, the like, three cost ability, you can always just untap Staff of Domination multiple times. So, wonderful mana sync there. Uh, and then we have Sword of the Prawns. Uh, pay three or four. Uh, as long as the creature is tapped, it gets plus two, plus zero. Oh, wait, is tapped, tapped creatures you control get plus two plus zero. As long as it untapped, untapped creatures you control gets zero plus two. So, um, it has the ability, which is the only ability that really matters on it. Pay three, you may tap or untap to equip creature, and then pay three equipped. Uh, with this, you can just pretty much go through all your mana, pay one to activate him, pay the three to untap him, pay one to activate him, pay the three to untap him. So we'll have no mana, and then... For as much mana as you have left over at the end of your turn, people are getting like 
that times three damage dealt to them if they don't know how to sync their mana correctly. So wonderful, wonderful. Same thing with Umbral Mantle, except for this has a zero equip cost and a three mana cost. So you can get this out a turn sooner, usually. Or two turns sooner if you count the equip cost of Sword of the Prawns. Uh, this creature gets plus two plus zero until the end of turn. So even if someone has a way of um, getting around like some sort of infinite mana sync where they just like gemstone array, like they have their own or they copy gemstone array or something, um, you can still just attack them with your commander, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then this is sort of an unmarked category, didn't know where to put these. Or I, this is still a mana sink, sorry. Uh, Magus of the Candelabra. Uh, pay X, untap X lands. This just is insane. I, I don't even know why I wouldn't run this. Because, you know, Sentinel Pain effects, you know, maybe not. But, you know, you pay X and then you untap all your colored mana. Especially with things like... Um, what is that? Uh, Horizon Stone. You have a bunch of colorless mana you can't use. Um, or, you know, you made a bunch of mana through mana doublers, which I'm about to get to. And then you have no idea how to use it. Just untap all your mana. Um, and then we have Zerta Ancient. This is a mana doubler. Uh, whenever an, a player taps, their, taps a land for mana. Sorry, I'm getting so ahead of myself. Uh, produce... An extra of that mana, pretty much. That and Dictative Karametra are ways to double mana. Everybody's just producing more mana. Game's going by quicker. People are taking more damage. And then we have some niche ways to make more mana. Um, we have Bevel, Corrupt Observer. Um, at the beginning of each player's post-combat main phase, that player adds two for each opponent who lost life this turn. So, you know, you attack somebody, or you attack two people, and then you create four. This doesn't necessarily hurt um, like combat phase decks, but it promotes attacking, which gets the game by quicker, uh, produces more mana, and if they can't use that mana, guess what? You're taking two, four, six damage. And then we have um, Ragadog. Dude, I have no clue how you pronounce this one. But, uh... He kind of has this cool synergy with all my mana druids. Um, each player you control with a mana ability gets plus two, plus two. Beefs up my boys a little bit. And then, uh... Whenever a creature you control with a mana ability attacks, untap it. Someone's open, attack them with Flynnor Elves. Untap it, bam. It's crazy. And I think... I, I'm not, I don't know for sure, but I think you can tap it to the untap ability. So, like, to the trigger. And your lock has vigilance, so whenever he attacks, he doesn't tap. And then you get the untap ability, like, the untap trigger, you tap him. And then you untap him, and then tap him after combat. I don't know if that works exactly like I'm saying it does, but I believe it does. And then an extra benefit with uh, whenever you cast a spell with at least 7 mana... Uh, untap target creature, it gains plus seven, plus seven, and haste until end of turn. It's pretty crazy. I think I only have one, I only have like one or two cards that can get that, but you know, it is what it is. It works when it works. I think I only have one card actually. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, let's get into oh, this is a one off card, Eternal Witness. Good in any deck. Uh, returns card from your graveyard to your hand. Play your best spell again. Uh, and then we have Ty uh, Ty Tyvern's Stand. Dude, I have no clue how to fucking say stuff. Uh, target creature gets plus X, plus X, and gains Hexproof, Indestructible, until the end of turn. I mean, at its cheapest, it's just one mana Heroics per uh, Intervention uh, for one creature. Saves your commander. Commander is definitely a lightning rod. Um, it is just attracts removal. Heard something in the corner of my room. The land package is not too much. 
uh, I got a bunch of basics. So I think in total, uh, I have 13 forests, 8 mountains, and 9 swamps. And then for the uh, non-basics, we got Classic Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Thriving Grove. We got Thriving Bluff, Cliff Gate, um, Black Dragon Gate, and Manor Gate. Um, I usually wouldn't use tap lands, but I was going on a like pretty cheap budget for this one, so uh, just any land that could produce any color, like you know, fix my mana a little bit. I didn't want like a two color gate in here, so try to put the choose one color. Then myriad landscape, it's slow, but it also ramps you, so it's a little bit of benefit in there. Um. Let's see, I forgot the draw package, so I kind of did a theme with my draw. It's like a little sub-theme. Um, we have the, like, draw to lose to life cards. So, Gruesome Realization uh, it has the draw to lose to, but it also has the creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one. This could just annihilate 1-1 one, one token decks, like, you know, squirrel decks. Um, what is that? Elf decks. Stuff like that. Pretty fun. Uh, painful Lesson. This you can just cast off of your lock's ability when you tap it. So target player draws two cards, lose two life. Pretty fun. Uh, funeral Rites, same thing. You draw two cards, lose two life, then mill two cards. And then we have Painful Truths. You draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of colors spent to cast a spell. Uh, my idea with this was your lock it tabs for... Three different colors, drawing three. Uh, sword Point Diplomacy. I saw this card in my collection, and I was like, this is fun. I don't know, it works with my, you know, my group slug feel. Because um, I draw three, pretty much. Like, I, I don't draw, but, like, I put them into my hand, quote-unquote. Uh, which, in this deck, it doesn't matter. I don't have any draw effects. Um, but an opponent can pay three life and exile one of those, pretty much. Uh, so this way, you know, it gets people's life total lower if they don't want me to draw cards. I guess they see what I'm drawing as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, it also works with the Your Luck three different mana, um, which is fun. Uh, then we have Read the Bones, Classic, Scry 2, Draw 2 cards, Lose 2 life. Works with the three mana. Uh, Sign and Blood... It's like the cheapest of the ones. And then we have uh, Ambitions... Or, yeah, Ambitions Cost. Draw three, lose three, but it's four mana. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, I can't complain if this is a budget card, you know? And then we have Theater of Horrors. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. During your turn, opponent lost life this turn. You may play lands and cast spells from cards exiled with this. And then it's also a mana sync with pay four. It deals one damage to target opponent. Um, I mainly put this in here for the mana sync, but the extra like little card draw is, it, you know, it, it obviously has its benefit. Um, but yeah, that's my tech deck. I tried to speed through it, uh, but getting through every card was obviously... A little bit long. We're at 24 minutes right now. Um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for all the support on the last video. And I'm out. Sorry for the one take. <laughs>